What's up, Econ John here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the integratability problem. Let's go. So what is the integratability problem? Concisely, the integratability problem is defined as the following. For an arbitrarily given demand function, does there necessarily exist a utility function by which such a demand was derived from? The consumer's problem in economic theory is to choose the optimal consumption bundle, which maximizes his or her utility. Oftentimes in applied work though, we just observe the consumption directly, and as a result, estimate demand without thinking about how it relates back to a consistent picture of consumer behavior. Say you are told as data analyst to estimate what a change in price will have on the effect of the demand for a product. Assuming you have data, you'd probably run a regression like regressing the price and time, which would deal with secular trend, on the, on the good or the quantity demanded. This estimation though providing an equation to describe the nature of demand is not enough to tell us about the mapping of consumer preference, which will be given by a utility function. But how do we know that we can recover the underlying utility function from a given demand equation? We see if our demand equation satisfies the Herkowitz-Uzwa integratability theorem. So the Herkowitz-Uzwa integratability theorem states that if a demand function x is a function of p and m, which is our Marshallian demand, is generated by rational preferences, then it satisfies the following four conditions. The first one is homogeneity, the budgeted exhaustion condition, or Walras's law. Its Slutsky matrix is symmetric, and its Slutsky matrix is negative semi-definite. If we observe that our Marshallian demand possesses these properties from one to four, then we can say that we can recover the utility function which generated such demand. So how do we uncover such preferences? Two steps. So step number one, we recover the expenditure function from our Marshallian demand function. And step number two, we recover our utility function or preferences from our expenditure function. So let's talk about recovering the utility functions from the Marshallian demand. Say we know the consumer's demand for a set of goods, which satisfies the HU theorem, which could be said as the Marshallian demand for good XI is equal to alpha i all over p i times m income m right where i goes from one to three which is the number of goods it considered in this utility function or this demand system recalling our properties of our expenditure function and shepherd's lemma we can rewrite this as the partial derivative of our expenditure function with respect to the price of good i is equal to alpha i times our expenditure function all over p i right, considering the same three goods over here. So Shepard's Lemma, remember, is just the partial derivative of our expenditure function with respect to the price of good I. That's the same thing as our Marshallian demand, which is also equivalent to our Hicksian demand. Okay, so for a little bit more algebra, we divide both sides by our an expenditure function. So this kind of changes what our uh, derivative equation looks like. Now we're having the partial derivative of our logarithmic uh, expenditure function with respect to the price of good I is equal to alpha i over p i because this is a change in percentage now so multiplying both sides by the partial of p i we get this kind of awkward looking equation what this equation over here implies though is that there exists some undifferentiated equation which can be written as the lo natural log of our expenditure function is equal to alpha naught which is a constant plus the alpha i logarithmic of pi right which where pi goes from one to three right note that at this point we don't know the specific value for alpha naught however we will know it so now that we have uh this equation as shown on the previous slide we could raise both sides to the power of e and just end up with our expenditure function is equal to the e raised to the power of alpha naught times uh the price of of good one raised to alpha one, price of good two raised to alpha two, the top price of good three raised to alpha three, right? We can rewrite the exponentiation of alpha naught as u because that's uh, just an arbitrary level of utility. It's just a value, right? This goes and gives us just the same equation as before, but this we put a u in the place of the exponentiation of alpha naught. So Inverting this equation and recalling that our expenditure function is equivalent to our income, we obtain our indirect utility function, 
and in turn the formula which generates an organic index of utility which you can use to compare consumption bundles and alternatives. So what we end up getting is that our indirect utility function is equal to income M all over price of good one raised to alpha one, price of good two raised to alpha two, and price of good three raised to alpha three. Thus, the integratability exercise has been completed. So it's worth mentioning what an example of a non-integratable demand equation is. Uh, the most noteworthy example of a non-integratable demand equation would be the classic linear demand equation that we go and we learn in, I guess, your intermediate micro type courses or introductory micro type courses, where we have Q as a function of P is equal to beta naught plus beta one times price. Uh, this equation is unintegratable because of the fact that it does not consider income M, which is essential for solving our expenditure function in step one and recovery of preferences or our utility function. Uh, just to summarize everything that I said in this video, the integratability problem refers to the process of recovering a utility function from a demand function for a good or set of goods. The reason why it's useful is because we end up with an organic index of utility or function to generate utils, which is seemed as so obscure in your introductory courses, and in turn, a tool to evaluate the impacts of price change on consumer welfare. So that's the integratability problem. Uh, I hope to see you guys more on this channel. Take care.